There were uh, two Canadians, uh, uh, Felix Mann and Patrick uh, Wall, uh, had a what they call a gate theory of pain. Uh, no, neurologic. No, part no, Melzek. Melzek, so well, Patrick Melzek, Ronald Wall. Yeah, yeah. right, yes, Ronald Melzek, Patrick Wall. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Those two developed a so-called gait theory of pain based on the fact that the substantia glutinosa in the spinal cord stains differently. If you make a slice of the spinal cord and stain it with osmic acid, it stains differently. Therefore, they felt that there was something that could either impede impulses going up or would change it. And what they tried to understand was, um, in some cases during the war, uh, if you got a lot of shrapnel, uh, it would produce a, a situation where the slightest vibration would cause the, the person to have a terrible amount of pain throughout their entire body. You couldn't fly an aircraft anywhere near any of the, um, Bethesda, the hospitals uh, during the war because they had so many veterans that, that had come back and had this particular syndrome. Um, uh, vibration as much as uh, five or 10 miles away would cause the the pain to start. And there's also uh, another situation called syringomyelia, where the spinal cord cavitates. And uh, many of the, the, the uh, veterans that, that had that uh, noticed that uh, if they would drum their fingers on a drawer or a bedroom dresser or something like that, it would go away temporarily. And many of the, the, uh, the men who had had a lost a leg would have phantom limb pain, which we're all familiar with. And one guy in particular had a very bad phantom limb pain. Uh, he had a mid-thigh amputation. He used to take a rubber mallet and smack his, uh, his stump with it and relieve the pain, and relieve the phantom limb pain. Uh, Melzek and Wall spoke about the syringomyelia. They spoke about that shock reaction from the shrapnel. They spoke about the syringomyelia. And in each instance, they said that the, there was a tapping technique. And I said, I wonder. I wonder whether or not uh, tapping is something that the acupuncture system accepts as a um, uh, remedial agent. And that's where we got the idea of tapping the, um, the acupuncture points to stimulate them. We had, uh, we had a patient that had been in uh, Asia and had um, done the tour there and uh, unfortunately had developed a, a um, a classic hepatitis, and at the same time she had a very bad clavicular fracture. And um, despite the best of orthopedic care for the clavicular fracture, she got a non-union of her fracture. At the same time she had a, a very bad case of infectious hepatitis, and she uh, was a patient. And I found that if I would stimulate um, the acupuncture circuit for the uh, liver, I would do therapy localization for the alarm point do therapy localization for the pulse points, I'd find the liver when I would tap the uh, liver eight point on her, on her knee, uh, it would change her vital capacity. She could breathe better because it would take the swelling down in her liver and it was very evident that her diaphragm would move better and it was very obvious that uh, she was always better but it wouldn't last. <coughs> in the meantime, she had the clavicular fracture and she was getting therapy for that and uh, taking other agents of calcium. They tried re-breaking the fracture to initiate healing without much success. And um, in an effort to, to help her one day, I spent a longer time tapping on liver aid. Uh, she could breathe better and then she'd say, oh, that's better, and then I would stop. I felt I'd accomplished my task, but I continued tapping for about maybe three or four minutes, much past the time I generally did, and she gave me a very peculiar look. And she said, uh, um, could that be helping the pain in my unresolved fracture of my clavicle? And I said, why do you ask? <laughs> and she says, because it stopped. And I said, well, uh, if that's the cause, we can certainly go down to the sedation point and bring it back. She said, I don't want to bring it back. I know, I said, in the interest of science, let's say it may be something entirely unrelated to what we're doing. So I went down to the sedation point on the large toe and tapped it, back came the pain. Also, back came the difficulty in breathing. I then tapped this tonification point at liver eight again. She could breathe better again. I kept it up and the fracture pain was all gone. 
I had a colleague, Terry Franks, who some of you know, who practices in uh, Minnesota now, and Burnsville, and, or Brownsville, is it? Burnsville. Burnsville. Yeah. Burnsville. And I said, Terry, why don't you come in? I want to show you something. I said, you've taken care of Mrs. So-and-so? He says, yes, she's got that hepatitis. I said, yeah. You know, she responds to this liver eight stuff pretty well. She breathes better. He says, yeah, she was telling me about that. I said, but I see something unusual, and I don't know whether it's the strength of my buoyant personality that's doing this, because she tells me her clavicle feels better when I probe it. I said, now I'm going to turn this thing off again. I want you to push on her clavicle. He said, that'll hurt her. I've done that. I said, do it. She said, sure, like this. And I tapped liver eight again for about two or three minutes. She again could breathe better, and the pain stopped. I said, now do it. If there's no pain. He says, what the hell is that? I said, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm going to find out. <coughs> that was the first uh, use of acupuncture uh, points to, uh, to uh, stop pain, and it was very useful, has been useful ever since. Now, some of the, um, the more um, up-to-date neurology texts uh, find fault with uh, the theories that Ronald Melzick and Patrick Wall had, but I keep referring to it because it has a historical point of view, plus the result of what we did works. And therefore, I would pay homage to Wall and, and uh, Melzick because the fact it happens to work, and we've developed even further methods of using different methods, beginning and end points, but the point is we started to make a very useful uh, value system using muscle testing, and uh, initially we were allowed to use uh, acupuncture needles for investigational purposes, but then the law changed and you were, unless you were licensed to do it in medicine or had taken the courses in acupuncture, in needle acupuncture, you had to use either acupressure uh, or finger pressure, and we found that Tapping was an extraordinarily useful method of practice, and it has stood the test of time. Um, you can change many things by the tapping technique and uh, the accidental observation of something tapping on a on a stump of a um, of a amputated leg or uh, the uh, the accidental uh, drumming of one's fingers on a bedside table to stop the pain of syringomyelia uh, was a source from Patrick Ronald Melzick and Patrick Wall which has stood us in good stead. And that's the source of how we've learned to use acupuncture to, um, to change things. <coughs>